Lillard's comments on the Bucks and how he feels the Bucks should have been performing like overall this season. So I'm going to pull up the quote real quick right now. And um, he says, quote, I thought we was going to be Boston. We was going to be how Boston is right now, end quote. So Damian Lillard, he feels as if the Bucks. They aren't really performing the like. Obviously, we all know that the Bucks they have they've been largely disappointing recently, um, with the with Doc Rivers coming in as their new head coach, and they've sort of they've dropped down from two all the way down to the like four or five in the seedings, as well as in the power rankings. We've reviewed the power rankings several times. They moved from being um, in the top uh, seven and top eight all the way to not being in the top ten at one point. So obviously there's a lot of things that the Bucks like they need to do like and they need to fix. But part of that is is Dame's fault. Like I'll get into that a little bit because I wanna um I don't wanna entirely blame it on Dame, but I also I also wanna like um sort of explain like it's it's normal to like for this Bucks team to be going through the type of things that they've been going through. And I feel like they, while they might sort of feel like it's disappointing, it might be a little bit, I think it might be over-exaggerated. Now, the Bucks again, they're, now they're in the third seed. They sort of just found their stride um, in winning a couple of games. But the gap between, again, the gap between the second seed and the first seed in the Eastern Conference is much greater than the gap between the first seed and the tenth seed in the Western Conference. No, actually the eighth seed in the Western Conference, excuse me. So <clears throat> obviously the Boston Celtics are a very dominant team being 46 and 12. <clears throat> excuse me. So for Dame to believe that um, the Bucks would have immediately been like this team, I feel like it's a little bit too much. I know, I understand Giannis, phenomenal player, and Dame, phenomenal player. And if you put them together, it just sounds like the perfect combination. But at the end of the day, it's not just two players on one team. There's a whole 15-man roster on NBA on basketball teams, and just and expecting that um, your team is going to be the best of the best, like how Boston is, just off of those two players alone, it's not. It, I don't really think it's something that should have been expected coming from the Bucks, because like. The Boston Celtics, they're a team that's that's been together. The the main core of that team with Jalen with Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Al Horford, um I'll just name a couple of more players on that roster that I I mean, they had Marcus Smart, unfortunately, like now they after the trade, they sort of like they don't have him anymore. Derek White, all of these players they've like um Luke Cornett, all of these players, they have that chemistry um from previously playing with each other especially Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. This is this wasn't an overnight thing for the Boston Celtics. This was this was a team that was built from the ground since like since 2018, I believe, when they made the Western Conference Finals with Jason Tatum as a rookie. Like this team has been has gone through it. They've gone through all sorts of hardships to get where they've been at right now. And we can't expect teams to be like Golden State where they got Kevin Durant and they were immediately the best team and everybody immediately expected them to make the finals. That's a completely different scenario because that team was incredibly stacked and incredibly powerful on the offensive side of the ball. And the the buck the not the bucks, the Celtics, they're incredibly powerful on the offensive side and the defensive side, but that was through drafting and through chemistry. And the Bucks recently acquiring Damian Lillard like they still need time before they can be that dominant team. So I think now it wasn't the season to expect that kind of dominance from the Bucks. However, I am not going to say that they haven't been disappointing this season. In the beginning of the in the beginning of the the season when they had Adrian Griffin, it looked like the Bucks were like they were just it was they looked like the Bucks and the Celtics were the team to beat. Like the game difference wasn't as big as it was now between the one seed and the second seed because the Bucks and like the Celtics, they were relatively they were relatively close in terms of their record. 
But when you add in a new coach mid-season, obviously there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of adjustments that need to be made mid-season. Not to mention the adjustments that Dame already had to make, being the second option on the Bucks under Adrian Griffin. Now he has to go, now he has to go through like a whole new coaching scheme mid-season. So essentially for Dame, that's three different head coaches in the span of less than a year. So that's not something easy for um, a team to overcome and for a player to overcome. And we talk about disappointments coming in from the Bucks. Dame has low Dame has low key been a very strong point in those disappointments. Like he's been a very prominent point in those disappointments. And like I'll talk about it more in a different segment you'll see later on, but Damian Lillard's tr- his efficiency and his true shooting percentage and his numbers, they've all dropped considerably. Now, obviously like the raw numbers and the raw stats, they're expected to drop when you're the when you go from being the number 1 option in Portland to being the number 2 option in a competing team. But it's the efficiency that I'm looking at, and the efficiency has dropped tremendously for someone like Dame. Dame is a, Dame has the reputation of being an elite three-point shooter, and he's shooting 34% from three. Someone who has that reputation as an elite three-point shooter and was getting talked about being as good of a shooter as Stephen Curry doesn't shoot this bad from the three. It's very bad for him. Now, for any other player that isn't that doesn't have that reputation, it's seen as decent or it's seen as like pretty good. But for someone like Dame, he should be shooting in the high like 38, 39% from three at the very least. But he's not doing that, especially like given how like the load has changed, his efficiency should have like at least like taken a leap. Similar to how Kevin Durant when he was on Golden State playing with Curry and Clay, his efficiency took a leap because there was not much pressure on him on the offensive side. Granted, there was a lot more pressure on him to win these games, however, and I feel like that pressure is sort of getting to Dame, and it's like he sort of doesn't necessarily know how to... I wouldn't say know how to deal with it, but it's new for him, I guess, because now he's expected to win, and he's expected to have these types of performances day in and day out. When... You're not really expected much from the media. It's a lot easier because there's a lot less stress. But when you're expected a lot, there's like a lot more that goes on in your mind. However, being someone like Dame, having a clutch reputation and have being ice cold, these type of things shouldn't really affect him. So I feel like most of this disappointment is more so like on him rather than like the team as a whole because... I feel like if Dame were to play like and was at least like just a little bit more efficient from the field, they would have won a lot more games here and the race between and the the game difference between the first seed and the second seed would be a lot closer between the two of them. Obviously, like it's still early in the midseason, so Dame has time to sort of like um and the Bucks have time to sort of adjust to it, but Again, like, um, this, this sort of stuff, like, I felt like it should have happened instantly with Dame because of, like, his reputation and as a player and as a shooter. But going into a new environment, going into, um, uh, going into a new offensive scheme, obviously, like, there might be some hiccups. And there's a little bit of debate, honestly, on who the leader of this team really is. Giannis keeps saying it's Damian Lillard, but the media refuses to give it to Dame, and they can insist that Giannis is the key player on this team. And I think it's sort of like both. Like, I'm, I'm very much for, like, the team, team basketball and whatnot. I don't think, and I don't think this Bucks team has like that guy like they do have that guy and they do have two guys right but they don't have one definitive guy and that's okay like that's part of the team and like um how do I put this in the way so Damian Lillard like he's the man down the stretch like he's the guy that you're going to give the ball to late in the game but Giannis can be can still be the best player on your team without needing to like take those um without needing to take those kinds of shots granted he can but he doesn't necessarily have to be the first option to take those shots and i think it sort of benefits the bucks in a way because dame's reputation being a clutch player 
it draws much more attention to him late in the game. And that allows more space for Giannis to not only create looks for himself, but to create looks for other teammates, thus giving them much more of a chance to win games late in the fourth quarter. It's very, it's much better when you have two guys that can hit that shot or that can win the game for you as opposed to just having one guy that could win the game for you. And I feel like that dynamic, it's like a Kobe and Shaq dynamic. Like, Kobe and Shaq, obviously, like, we say that Shaq is the best player, like, on the on that Laker team, but some people might argue that Kobe was the most clutch and the closer of that team. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's And there's nothing wrong with that. People still had the respect for Kobe, and there was still, like, debate on, like, whether or not Kobe was, like, the man of that team. But, like, I don't see a problem with them sharing that name, honestly. Like, it's a dynamic duo for a reason, and they brought them together for a reason. So a lot of people tend to be harsh on Giannis, be, um, on Giannis because it's like, oh, he's not, the, he's not the one that's taking the final shot. And a lot of people like to be harsh on Dame because he's not even the best player on his team. Yes, that's the dynamic that both of them have, and that's what makes them so great. That's what could make them so great if they can work on their chemistry and they can elevate themselves to that type of play. But that's just my personal opinion. So with that, we're out of time with our second segment. So we're going to go into the third segment where I talk about, uh, where I give a quick recap of all of the NBA games that went down yesterday. So stay tuned for that after this short break. I will be right back. <laughs> 